What is good everybody, it is Spill here and welcome back to another NBA 2K Lab video. After our 6-9 build guide, we decided to make a 6-1 guide and I only like to do these after playing on these builds for a good amount of time so I can see what's viable and what is not. These 6-1 PGs are so versatile because of their attribute weighting and they seem to get so many more attributes than other heights and you can still make them quick without sacrificing anywhere else. Now I've been playing around with different attributes and badge levels and after making a couple different 6-1s, I think I can finally say I found a great all around PG build with all the tools to be great. I have another build at the end I'm going to show you guys and while they are similar they each have key differences that can make a big difference when it comes to your specific play styles and the main build I'm going to go over first is a prototypical 6-1 PG that checks all the boxes and no this is not a comp pro-am point guard build with no defense so if you want to see one of those videos there's plenty out there on YouTube but let's get right into the video. For the body settings, we're obviously going 6-1 and then we're going to 196 pounds to give us the maximum weight before we drop below 90 acceleration. I always try to maximize these heights and weights to fit the caps that I want to get the most out of it. Many pros and comp pro-am guards aim for 95 acceleration and while you will feel a difference, I think 90 is probably the minimum you'd still want to be effective. Now for the wingspan, we're going to 6-7 to make sure we have just enough three point rating to unlock that gold limitless range while still keeping some wingspan to help on defense. The body type doesn't matter and it's all preference and I'm just going to keep a default here, but if you ever watch my particular build videos and you know what I pick for my body type comment down below so those are our body settings and now let's get into the good stuff starting with finishing we have a 59 close shot for the badge point there and as a smaller guard we're not looking for too many of these types of shots so 59 will be fine for layup we went with a 74 for the badge point as well and you'll still unlock gold giant slayer which will be a nice bonus I know some people will say maybe go to 80 for the layup packages and hall of fame giant slayer and while the boost is good on hall of fame for giant slayer you'll need to supplement that with a mid to high 80s layup rating for it to actually be worth it so that's why i think goal will be just fine for what we're trying to accomplish with this build another reason we're not raising the layup is because we're going to go with an 86 driving dunk for the pro contacts and gold limitless takeoff now i've tried the 88 dunk for the mj limitless dunk package and it's decent and nice to have but honestly i don't think it's worth it having dunks like quick drops off one and even front clutches will be more than enough and probably even more effective if you want flashier limitless takeoff dunks you could equip something like clyde drexler or straight arm tomahawks off one and there's some other packages that will activate limitless as well but in total this is going to give us 18 finishing badges which is going to be more than enough for everything we need moving on to our shooting category this is going to be pretty straight to the point we're raising our three point to 92 as i said earlier for that gold limitless range badge which will be very much worth it i haven't had a build with gold limitless range before this one and the difference is night and day right so if you've ever watched our limitless range badge test you know that this badge works really well even at the silver level but you can see by the chart that once you get to gold the make percentage skyrockets once you get to that 92 rating your midi goes to a 77 so if we just bump this up one more point we get that extra badge for a total of 24 shooting badges which is good but still might be a little low for some people so you may have to use some extra badge points here if you're not getting everything you want we put free throw to 74 because that's what we had left over after the build was complete and this should be plenty to consistently make your free throws at a 90 percent clip or better next we have our playmaking and this is another category i've dabbled with for a bit to find out what works well and what doesn't so starting with pass accuracy we went with an 84 and at 85 you do unlock more passing styles but for some reason pass accuracy is insanely expensive and I think will be just fine with an 84 in that LeBron passing style. And as a matter of fact, that's what we recommend. I've tried 75 pass accuracy and even 79, but to me, that still feels a little low and anything around 85 really feels like the sweet spot for me. For ball handle, we're going to a 94 at a minimum to make sure we unlock handles for days on gold because as a primary ball handler, your stamina is extremely important and having low stamina will affect your ability to do just about everything on the court, whether that's dribbling, shooting, or dunking, or anything else. Now, we recently ran the handles for days test and it showed that at the Gold level you'll be able to do 50 percent more dribble moves before you run out of stamina which is a large step up from silver at 92 ball handle you're also going to unlock all the signature dribble animations which you'll need as a point guard now lastly we have speed with ball and at 83 you shouldn't see a noticeable difference in your dribbling speed unless you're running full court and you're not using any animations the speed at which you dribble is more or less dictated by your acceleration and your quick first step badge so in half court sets especially it's going to be tough to tell a difference so this gives us a total of 26 playmaking badges which is a good amount for a well-rounded build build like this although I do think you might need more and we'll go into the badge loadouts after we finish the build now we have our defense and I wanted to make sure I could hold my own at least a little bit so I started with an 80 perimeter which gives us a badge point there and I honestly just like the number 80 at 79 perimeter you get silver challenger which can actually work decent given our 6-7 wingspan and can help with those closeouts and jump shot contests not to mention your lateral quickness is tied to perimeter defense so that means we'll have an 80 lateral quickness as well which should also be pretty good now next we have an 85 steel to unlock that silver glove which is going to give us 
us a good chance to get a rip, especially on players with low ball handling. I've tried a 78 steal rating to get that silver interceptor, but you'll see a significant difference when going to 85 for the silver level of glove. Now, lastly, we have a block at a max of 61, and while you probably won't see many, this attribute is fairly cheap and worth having since you can even get silver chase down artists with it. And paired with the vertical for the contact dunks, you will see the occasional block. Now, I try to build with max interior on a PG as well, and I can tell you firsthand it's not going to make a difference, so you can save your points there, and we're honestly not worried about rebounding since we're 6-1 and we typically have other people on the court for that. So that finishes up our defense and we'll have a total of 20 badges. Now lastly we have our physicals and I went with a pretty even spread here for speed. I went with an 80 which is going to be fine. It's not the greatest but since you'll have the ball in your hands for most of the game as a point guard you won't need to rely on your speed as much as other types of players. It's mainly for off ball movement and defense. Next for acceleration we went with a 90 which as I said in the beginning is going to work well but I wouldn't try going any lower than that. Then we have a 75 vertical for the pro contacts and it's going to help slightly on your chase downs as well and then as i stressed before how stamina is so important we went with a 98 stamina so we are not running around blinking you get four different takeovers with slashing, shot creating, sharp, and play take. And I typically roll with limitless range, which is still kind of OP. And then team ratings boost to help boost my playmaking attributes a bit more as I get hot. You get the shades of Abdul Raouf, Darius Garland, and De'Aaron Fox. And it comes out to be a three-point shot creator. This build really does it all and does it at a high level. So if you're looking for a little speedy point guard that can shoot from deep like Curry, dribble like Kyrie, and then dunk like Ja Morant, this is going to be the build for you. Now, when it comes to badge loadouts for finishing, I would do something like Giant Slayer gold fearless finisher acrobat and aerial wizard all on bronze which gives us those 10 badge points to unlock our tier threes and then from there you can get your limitless takeoff and still have a badge point left over which i might put aerial wizard up to silver or gold depending on which tier three badge i want to equip either limitless gold or slithery silver i do like post riser but i think slithery is just slightly more valuable for shorter guards keep in mind that some of these badges will take a while to core so until you core them you'll have to pick and choose what's the most effective for now a good way to do it is seeing what your core badge progress is like after a few days of playing and then see what will be easier for you to core faster. For the shooting badges, I would personally go Volume Shooter and Green Machine Hall of Fame as a point guard who's most likely taking the most shots, which will unlock our 10 point badge threshold. And then you could do something like Gold Limitless Range and Agent 3, or go for Blinders and Agent 3 if you like to fade off it. Deadeye isn't a bad badge by any means, but it does feel slightly inconsistent. But eventually, after one of those is cored, you get to have at least three of your tier three badges. Now, with core badge loadouts as a level 40 reward, you could eventually have all of your tier three badges, which would make this an insane shooting build without even adding any extra badge points. Badges like Space Creator and Claymore are also really good, but you have to decide on how you want to play and as a PG, what's the most effective for you. Now, if you can get amped on at least bronze, I would also recommend it, but it's not a game breaker by any means. For playmaking badges, I would rock something like this. And if I had no extra badge points, I would basically equip all my tier twos as high as I can get them besides hyperdrive because I need seven for handles for days and then you can core clamp breaker or vice versa. Now, both of those tier three badges are fairly easy to core and will most likely benefit you the most. I personally don't use killer combos often as it's just not part of my playstyle. but if you utilize a lot of misdirects and pullbacks and you use a lot of right stick dribble moves then you may be able to stun your defender even on just the gold level so that's something to consider. I might also consider adding three of my badge points into playmaking so I could get silver needle threader for the stuns that you can get and then after that I can max my hyperdrive to hall of fame you know or I can switch it around to do whatever I want but we recommend you at least use some of your extra badge points in this category as there are a lot of pretty good playmaking badges and lastly for our defensive badges I'm using a loadout like this will max chase down to silver max our pick dodger as well i personally don't believe in menace as it only works when playing good defense which means shots taken with menace activating will already be contested well so instead i would go with workhorse to help get those loose balls after a pluck or a long rebound ankle braces can also be considered if you find yourself getting stunned from killer combos or ankle breaker but then for our tier threes we're going with glove on silver and once that's scored which should be quick we're going with challenger on silver and if you can add at least one extra badge point here you'll have enough for bronze clamps which would be nice to have considering the 80 perimeter defense now i told you guys i had another build that's just slightly different but here's another way to make this build i know there may be some people who don't care to shoot from super deep so for this build we have an 89 three point instead of a 92 to get us that gold agent three and then we went with a max wingspan and also lowered the dunk slightly so we do give up the contacts but what we get instead of those things is better acceleration hall of fame clamp breaker which is going to help make your finishing just as effective if not better when rim running not to mention you also get hall of fame unpluckable and the pass 
accuracy is slightly better as well going from an 83 to an 86 you get that gold needle threader which is a big bump from the silver level when it comes to stunning out of position defenders the defense is even going to be a little bit better as well because of the 610 wingspan and slightly better block so if you're looking for more of a playmaking focused point guard that can still do everything else you might want to consider this one if you're looking for a dribble tutorial and the animations to use on a shorter point guard i recommend checking out my boy koza's most recent dribble tutorial it's easily the most comprehensive and simple dribble tutorial i've seen and he also has a hand cam so everything is right there and easy to figure out so that is all for this 6-1 build guide thank you all for watching it's been spill and i'm out later